Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. Spring is in the air. The snowdrops are in full bloom. And I am back on the Roman field. Well, what a day we have had today. I've had to lie down several times. That's how good a day it's been. Uh, I have had Roman silver more than one. But... I have been eclipsed by Sneaky Pete. He's only went and got gold. Pete has given out a big scream of gold. So let's go and see what he's got, the jammy swine. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. And more importantly, a very, very special field, the Roman field. At the moment, um, there's Pete and I out. Pete's away in the distance, he's about Four or five hundred metres away. I phoned him to see how he's getting on. He's had one coin that he thinks might be Georgian. And uh, a few bits of trash. So he's only been going for half an hour. I think I've got four hours possibly to do. Maybe three and a half, four. So fingers crossed. Let's see if we can find a Roman horde. As ever, I'm on the 13 inch uh, coil, the XP DS2. I'm going with program 3, sensitive full tones. Um, Pete tells me he's on a custom program, which uh, is the, the Toddy program. Um, and uh, I've got that one saved in my detector as well, but I'm still playing about with it, just uh, sorting the settings. I have literally, this is where I was doing my intro for the, uh, the snowdrops, which are just there. And uh, so my footprints are going back and forward. Started at the edge of the field, right there, and right here. We've got a digger. It's an 80. Could be a bit of tin foil, especially this close to the edge of the field. But it could be a half penny, or a button, or something copper related. Ah, there is, it's surely not a coin, it's a button, that is a button, there's the loop, there is the loop, it's a little bit bent, it's very very worn, but it's still intact, and that is the button, the field is really dry at the moment, we've not had any significant rain for a couple of weeks, it's been a very dry winter all in all, um, but that's probably got a bit of age to it. It's probably 1700s, 1800s, so certainly in the two to three hundred year old category. So pretty good start. You know how much I love my buttons. It's taken me, having got a signal in the first three inches, it's taken me half an hour to get another signal. 81. Mm, bit rough, not a coin. I don't think. Still an 81. And not particularly deep, but we're out of the ground. I think we've got a musket ball. Oh, there it is. We have got a musket ball. So, always nice to find. And uh, that is 100% a lead musket ball. Probably fired from a big long barreled rifle. I've made it, said it many times before. First firearms in Scotland came in the 1380s. Very primitive, very crude. The likelihood is this is probably 16, 17, maybe even early 1800s. But I do always wonder who were they shooting at or what were they shooting at? Oh, dropped it. So that's an all right find a button and a musket ball, but nothing Roman yet. Well, I've almost finally caught up with uh, Pete. He's only about 30 metres, about 100 feet away from me, so hopefully I'll make contact with him in a minute, find out what he's got. In the meantime, 68, 69 for me. Buckle territory, copper territory. Still in the hole. Come on, a wee Roman would be nice. A wee 4th century. 
It's not the greatest of signals, to be honest. Well, still can't find it. So let's get in the hole with the carrot. Well, I'm in the right area, but I'm not deep enough. I'll get right back to you. Spotted that straight away. Came from about 10 inches. Big lump of iron. That cannot be the target. And it isn't. There's something else there. Yep. Well, there you go. Big iron, but it's picked out. Another target. Let's get that in the pocket. And get the Garrett Carrot. Somewhere here. And there we are. Maybe a little buckle. It looks like a buckle. And it is a buckle. So it's a little D buckle and it's still got his pin. So I don't know if the pin's actually iron on that one or not, but I did ask the question on my last video, which was I never quite knew why they had iron pins on copper buckles, but someone very kindly said the reason is that the iron would bend. It was kind of supple, whereas the copper or bronze would snap. So that's why they would use the pin for copper. Eh, sorry, for iron. That makes sense to me. You can actually see it's even bent. Date-wise, probably going to be Victorian, Georgian, 17 or 1800s, I'm reckoning. But still, it's a nice find. Well, Pete straight in with a find, which initially looks like milled silver. It's not though, it's one of these pesky tomback buttons, but it's lost its loop. We're uh, joined by aeroplanes overhead, but uh, so that's probably from the era of George III. So about 1760 to 1820. Okay, that was the buckle right there, and right here, where I was standing. is an ear blowing 99. So, maybe a bit too good to be true. Oh. Yeah. Now not sounding very good at all now. I've taken the top off. Now sounding good again. So maybe it's something that's thin and it was on its edge. What have we got? Well, there it is right there. It's a little coppery thing. A little brass coppery. It's almost like a coin. But it's got a big rim on it. Hmm. It's a strange one. It's obviously been getting rubbed about in the soil a little bit recently. It's a bit shiny on the high spots. Oh, dropped it. Oh, it's got a crown on it. That is indeed a crown. Look at that at the top. Well, I can't say I've had one of them before. If it is a a weight or something. Don't worry, this brush is very gentle. Before anyone says I'm rubbing off detail, I could look. It's tickly rather than taking off anything that it shouldn't. Uh, not really much going on there, is there? But definitely something there. I tell you what, it's a harp. Look. It's a harp with a crown above it. It's Irish. Something Irish. Something Irish. Quite a lot of Irish stuff coming off this field and the one next door. I think it's a coin. H I B E R N. And then there would be I and A, Hibernia. So that is a coin that for some reason has been defaced. Someone's sort of hit it on the edges with a hammer or such like to make it a raised, oop, to make the edges raised. Not sure why you would do that. So it's probably going to be George the Third, I'm guessing. There's a nose there, look. Looking to the right hand side, it's 
something IE, probably Britannia, maybe. Um, but looking to the right hand side would mean it's probably George the Third or George the First. A coin that has been repurposed, but a very interesting coin. So let me know what the purpose of that is. Either way, it's probably George the Third, 1760 to 1820. Well, having gone over half an hour without a signal, I've now had three signals in five minutes. This one's a bit faint. Mm, might be a bit of iron in there as well, but... 87, 88. So, let's see what we might have. Well, it's out, I think. Yep, we're out and it's sounding reasonable. I think there's still iron around. Some iron there. Might even be a bit of iron over there as well. Who knows, it could just be a little bit of a nail or something. Right. Yeah, I thought it was there. Oh, it's there. There is something there. Oh, he's got another silver. That is another silver, Roman. Pete! Roman silver. That is a denarii. Has to be a denarii. Look at the thickness of it. Yes, it is, if I can get the soil off. Right, I'm going to wet it, it's a bit sticky. That is another Roman silver coin, I think. <laughs> well, see if it isn't now, I'm going to be embarrassed, but it has to be. Look at the thickness of it. Right, off you get. 100% Roman silver coin. You can see a head looking to the right hand side. Who is it though? What have we got on the back? Well, it doesn't look so good on the back. Mm, can't really see much going on there, to be honest. It's pretty plain. Well, there might be a few letters. Something or columns, maybe, standing there. But that, folks, is another Roman silver coin. Well, there we are. 2nd century Roman silver coin. This has probably not been held in almost 1800 years, give or take. Now I can just about make out around the edge T O N I V S and then A V G. So that's Antonius or Antoninus Augustus. And you can see a figure, he's a bit crusty on the forehead, but you can see a head looking to the right hand side. And that is Antoninus Pius, I do believe. And he ruled from about 136 to about 160 AD. He was actually adopted by the Emperor Hadrian. It was quite common in the early Roman period to adopt young boys. So he wasn't blood related to Hadrian, but he went on to take over from him when he died. The reverse is a bit different. There is some lettering on there. What I originally thought it was was a couple of pillars, maybe with a figure standing in the middle. However, I'm pretty certain at the bottom it says C-O-S-T-A-N, Constant, maybe. And you can see a P and an R up here. Possibly an R and an A there. So I'll need to clean that up when I get home. And that's possibly D-E-C. Decimus, maybe? Pre something ra. Pre ra decimus consta. I don't know. At the second century Roman silver. Yet another one. Right, get on the hunt, see if there's more. 
I've been on a run of tin can, tin can, ring pool, tin can, sardine can, tin can. I thought I maybe had another tin can, but it's actually a piece of lead. It's circular. It's got a hole in the middle. I think... I think we call that a washer. A lead washer? Quite possibly. But got a bit of age to it, just not quite sure how old. Just here, another 78. Just like that bit of lead that I got just a few feet away. Well, six or ten feet away, so maybe another lead washer. Oh, might actually be a coin. We've got a signal with a bit of an iron tone. Definite iron in there, but it's an 85. So we're going to give it a go. Still in there. And sounding very strange. Still in there. And sounding very strange. Right, we're out. We're out, we're out, we're out. Somewhere here. Oh, where is it? Is it in there? It's there. What's that? That's a white fleck. What's there? Nothing. It's there. Hey, we've got another Roman. That is another Roman silver. 100%. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Look at that. Oh, it's a nice one. Look at the detail coming through already. 100% Roman silver. Here we go. So as I mentioned earlier, you can see the figure standing with a, a cornucopia, the horn of plenty. And on the other side, won't clean up very well, unfortunately. But there is just enough for me to see, which is, let me zoom you in a little bit, the letters C-O-M-M. -M. So I do believe that that is Commodus. And Commodus ruled from about 175 AD along with his father, Marcus Aurelius, until his father, Marcus Aurelius, died, which was about 180, and then Commodus ruled on his own. And I think Commodus died about 195 AD. I was actually reading up a little about Commodus the, uh, the last time I found a Commodus coin, and uh, he was assassinated, as lots of Roman emperors were, but he was assassinated in quite a bizarre way. He was, uh, he was drowned in a bathtub by a wrestler. <laughs> so that's a bit of a weird way to go, to be drowned in a bathtub by a wrestler. That's quite the assassination. So, beautiful coin, Roman silver, number two. Over the moon with that. And that is the two coins side by side. I should have really put them in my coin pod because that's been rubbing in my pocket. See how it's got shiny around that edge. I don't think it was that shiny before. But double Roman silver. You beauty. Damn, what an idiot. I, I pressed the record button and didn't press the record button. Or I double tapped it and started and stopped it. I checked the hole before I filled it in. It's another target. I've gone down about 14 inches and it's just come out over here. And it's an 88, and I'm also out of breath. It's an 88. Oh, 
Where is it? <gasps> it's another silver. Ah, oh, it's another silver Roman. Right. Hundred percent Roman Fide F I D E, uh, which I can't remember what that stands for again. My Latin is not what it should be, but you can see a figure clear as day standing in the centre. Again, we've got more crustiness on this coin, and there we have one hundred percent. We've got a head. We have got a head. I tell you what, it might be Hadrian. Could be Hadrian. He's got that really big square nose. Ugh. Right, I'm going to dry this up off camera and get back to you in a minute. I've checked the hole again. No more targets, but I'm going to take another few spade fools out in a minute just to be sure. I've never had two out the same hole before. But that is another Roman silver. And I was right. I can just make out the words R-I-A-N-V-S. Rianus. It's Hadrian. It's Emperor Hadrianus. A-V-G. Augusta. And the reverse. Very nice and shiny. Some people will say it's too shiny. But whew, what do I know? It's, it is what it is. You just dig stuff up. Sometimes it's black. Sometimes it's grey. Sometimes it's silver. In this case, it's grey on one side, silver on the other. Complete with a few crusty spots. So Emperor Hadrian. So he ruled from, I think it was 98 to about 136, 138 AD. And he was followed by the other guy who you just saw, um, which is uh, Antoninus Pius. So... I'm blown away, absolutely blown away. Just incredible. This this coin's potentially 1,900 or more years old. This is why we metal detect. I've lost track of how many Roman silvers we've had now off this field. This year it must be 15, maybe more. Uh, I'll need to do a tot up when I get home, but that is magic. Unbelievable. Right, I'm going to go and head around this area and see what else there is to, to have. How about that for a day so far? So far, three Roman silver denarii, two buttons, musket ball, lead washer, buckle, and um, about 40 pieces of aluminium and tin foil, and a few fragments of lead. That is superb. That is why we metal detect. And right there, that's where they came from. I've marked it with a GPS. I'm going to come back on this very spot with a horde hunter. I'm quite a distance away. I'm about 45 metres away from where I got the Roman silvers last time. So, it's an area I'm going to focus on. See if there's anything else to be had. So, that was the two Roman denarii. And right here... There's a 76, a little bit, bit, little bit low for Roman silver, but let's take a wee bit out. 75, still a little bit low, but God, this is exciting. That is it, whatever it is. It is a, oh, there's something, it's a, it's a, it's a watch winder. That is a watch winder. Oh, man. God, I was just so excited for a wee second there. So look, it still twists that little bit, look. So that is a watch winder. That's for a pocket watch. Oh, man. My heart was in my mouth. Let's see. Uh, Give it a wee brush. Oh, I'm not built for this kind of excitement. God. 
No, it's just a plain. It's just a plain one. Oh man. Well, there you go. Date wise, probably going to be Victorian, I would guess. Sometime in the 1800s to 1900. Damn, but still, it's a nice find. Ah, oh, my heart can't take this anymore. I'm going to need to go for a lie down. I got myself a 59 and uh, it was on a bit of a furrow. I kicked it with my foot and we've got ourselves a little toy soldier. Or half of a toy soldier. He has been through the wars. Literally. Let's try and poke out all that mud. So he's made a lead. Just what you want to give children who are going to chew on everything. But back in the old days... Oh, Back in the old days, everyone was <laughs> chewing on lead or putting it in their wallpaper or their paint, should I say, on the walls. So, he's a wee lead soldier. He's, uh, he's been killed in action. He has lost half his height. But I uh, don't see a maker's mark or a name on there. But I'm guessing probably 1900 to 1950, give or take. And I'm sure it was a, a little boy or girl's pride and joy. And there's been a development. Pete is jumping about and screaming in the distance uh, like a crazy person. Now I can't show you because if I did I'd have to film the whole length of the field. I don't know if the microphone will pick up him screaming in the distance or not, but... He is very excited and he is shouting a four letter word. Pete has given out a big scream of gold. So let's go and see what he's got, the jammy swine. So Pete has got some gold. What's he got? He's got himself a ring. Pete is on the gold. That's two bits of gold this year. Mm. When did you get the half sovereign? Was that, was that December, Maybe that was November, that December. December. Well, it's two bits of gold in your metal detecting career. Oh. And both of them within... Within six months. Both within six months. It is a ring. It's a little bit bruised. What was the output like? Mm, not great. Not great. So, and you've got, you've got letters on the inside. You've got an inscription. How do you hold that and film it? Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. It says something. Love. And it's hallmarked. There's a something, a lion, an O or a Q. Let me zoom in. Here we go. So we've got a something, a lion, an O, a JG. I can't quite it hold could it. Be JJ, but I'm not sure. GJ. Well, I'm sorry, it's not no, it's definitely a J and then a G. So that'll be the maker. And then what does that word say? I think it's United. It is. U-N-I-T-E-D. Love. United love, Pete. Oh, my goodness. I'm united in my love for it. <laughs> there you go. Pete is united in his love for it. Gold twice in six months. And all with... This machine right here. Oh, look at him. He's on a custom program. Oh, you're not supposed to you see that Cheeky, bit. cheeky devil. Look at him using his custom program. Right. So there you go. That, ladies and gents, is a gold ring. Pete, go and dance. I don't know. I'm not dancing. He's not dancing. Pete's not dancing. Well, let us know in the comments how old that ring is. Um, based on the... Uh, the assay marks, if anyone can tell. But Pete, either way, it doesn't matter. You've struck gold twice 
In six months, well, he's hoping for Detectiveville to find more gold. But there you go. Well done, Pete. Double gold in six months. And how long have you had the days to? Well, you got it back in July last year, was it? So, over a year. Not, not quite a year. No. Probably nine months or something. So there you go. XP Days 2 keeps on delivering. Well, how about that for Sneaky Pete? I'm over the moon with him. For him, not with him. Well, I am with him. <laughs> um, I taught him everything he knows. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, oh, made up. Absolutely made up. I cannot believe it. These guys are just un unbelievable. It took me 20, 21 years to find my first thing made of gold. Martin gets a, a gold noble in nine months. Pete has been detecting for a similar period of time as Martin. He got his first gold uh, three or four months ago, a half sovereign of Queen Victoria. A really nice coin. And, uh, and now he's just went and got a gold ring. Uh, just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I'm made up for him. Uh, he's found it with the XP Deus 2. He's got the custom program in from Toddy. And, uh, oh, just... What a day. Triple Roman silver. And he's only went and got a gold ring. Ah, oh, just... Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm lost for words. Totally lost for words. I hope we've not peaked too soon. We've got Detectiveville in... 30 days, big metal detecting rally in the south of England. Um, we, we hope we don't use all our luck up before then, but oh, what a boy, what a lucky man. As I say, I'm made up. When you get guys into detecting and they go on and they find great things, some people might say, oh, but it's on your field or it's on your land. You could have found it. Well, I haven't found it in almost 25 years of looking. I could have been another 25 years and still never found it. So good luck to him. Absolutely made up. Uh, three silver, and I think I've been, I've been eclipsed by uh, by Pete. So, ah, oh, I've just had to have a wee lie down. This is all too much, too much excitement for me. Uh, I'd love to hear what everyone thinks about the uh, the assay marks on the uh, gold uh, ring. Also, the wording, uh, United Love. We don't know if that means they love Manchester United. Or maybe Dundee United, um, or maybe they're united in love, uh, in love their old romantics. But uh, I'd be interested to see if anyone can identify the uh, the assay marks, so we can get a date. Um, so that was the uh, two denarii right there. You'll see all my footprints. I've been going round and round before Pete called me away. I've come back again, carried on where I left off, and right here is a sixty-five which is too low for a Roman denarius, I think. Well, it's out. Didn't do a great job of digging, but it's out. So come on. Right, we're in here. Let's uh, stick my carrot in my welly. Do we see anything? It is a clod shot. Oh, maybe there. Maybe there, I think there is, there's something right there, look at that. Definitely. Ah, come on, open up. I think it's a button. Oh, it's not a button. What is that? It's got gilding on it. And it's green. Oh. Is it valuable? Is it, I mean, eh, not valuable. Fragile. It's, ah, oh, it's getting bigger. It's another pocket watch. No way. How can I get two pocket watches so close together? That is massive. There's an imprint for anyone who's like, yeah, whatever. Um, look at that. What is that? That's different, isn't it? Right. Well, what will I do? Will I brush it or will I wet it? No, I think I'll brush it. Just give it a wee gentle dust and see if we can open it up. Get that mud out. Oh, I've got just the tool. Well done, Les. Look at that. 
Well, I've never had one of these before. Never had one of these before. Not really sure what this bit here is supposed to do. Is it decoration or has it got a function? Some sort of purpose. It's very fragile so don't worry I'm being extra 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 careful. I'm sure that was probably a wee sore loss for someone. It looks like it's been something of sort of value to them. So I'm really not sure what's going on here. That might be bent over. Obviously I'm not going to force it back by itself, but that is, I do believe, pocket watch number two. That's bizarre, isn't it? How you can find two pocket watches very, very close together. Probably 15 feet away for the last one. You could probably detect the rest of this field for a year and never find another one. Right, date-wise, again, probably going to be 18 into the 1900s, I'm guessing, but let me know your thoughts. What a day. What a day. There's a real bit of a wind picked up now, coming in off the east. Which is pretty cold. We've got a 50, it's a mid-tone. Pete tells me the gold was about a 50, so, you know, don't rule out a 50. Still in the hole. It's very, very uh, irony sounding, so maybe more than one target in there. There's a bit of iron right there. And that is definitely a solid signal to the left. Where's the iron? I think the iron's actually under the ground, so yeah it is. The iron's there. And the good target is here. Ah! It's a coin, I think. Is that a 50? That can't be a coin. It is a coin. Wait until you see the transformation under the bendy thumb, where you could see no detail. Look at that. That is Queen Elizabeth II. And on the reverse is the words at the bottom, six pence. And the date of 1957 with Fid Def, Defender of the Faith. And then you've got the thistle of Scotland. You've got the shamrock of Ireland. You have the rose of England. There's a leak on there somewhere, I'm sure. Is that the leak there? That is. That's the leak of Wales. The national plant of Wales. So, the date of 1957. And it's called a silver sixpence, but it isn't really because there's no silver in it. And by 1947, our coins only had 50% silver in them, and from that point onwards, we got rid of silver altogether. So this is 10 years after. So there is zero silver in this coin. It is made of cupronickel, copper nickel mixture. But six pence, still in Scotland, considered to be a lucky coin. Brides, as they go down the aisle to get married, usually wear a silver sixpence in their shoe for luck. Ah, and it just came to me as well. Uh, a couple of people have mentioned it in comments, one of whom bought me a buy me a coffee. Thank you very much. Um, they mentioned that uh, Brian May, the guitarist of Queen, well, in fact, he's Sir Brian May, that he uses a sixpence as a plectrum when he's strumming his guitar. So there you go. There's a nice fact. So thank you for the couple of people who mentioned that. I'm just going to film this one now because it's sounding a bit more interesting. It came through a really rattly 85, 86. As you can see, I'm down pretty deep already. Ah, oh, I might have missed it. It's maybe there. There somewhere. Right, gonna have to get the speed out, get back to you in a sec. Well, that's bizarre. It's big iron. It's a big piece of iron. I'm assuming probably 
from a plough or tractor, something agricultural machinery related. Well folks, that is it for today. What a day. What a day. Triple Roman silver was good enough. And then I've been I've been overtaken by Pete who's hit the gold. Everyone wants to find gold, but honestly I'm happy with three Roman silver coins. Right, let's take a closer look at today's finds. I'm afraid uh, Pete Pete had already left the field. Uh, he's gone about half an hour. I mean, I think he flew out the field. He, he didn't need to walk, um, but he was he was just too far away from me to do a, a follow up with him. But obviously, you've seen the gold ring, and uh, that is the extent of my finds. So we've got a very nice gold, sorry, gild, gilded, gilted. I don't know, just gold stuff on it. Uh, watch winder and another watch winder which is just the bizarrest of things clearly it was the part of the field where the Romans were losing coins and farmers were twisting their pocket watches and then three Roman silver denarii that is just incredible so at the top Hadrian on the right Antoninus Pius and on the left Commodus another coin we got was silver the late Queen Elizabeth, oh I've dropped it, Queen Elizabeth II, right there, which is a sixpence. The musket ball, probably 17 or 1800s, 16, 17, 1800s. The buckle, a couple of buttons, which are probably from a similar period as the musket ball. And then lastly, a wee toy soldier, or half of them, and a lead washer of course. But what a day it has been. What a day. Triple, triple Roman silver and gold for Pete. I'm over the moon. We're both over the moon. So thank you all for watching. I hope you liked what you've seen. If you're not already subscribed, then hit the button. Doesn't cost you a penny. Turn on the notifications. But either way, give me a thumbs up and hopefully we'll see you all on the next dig. Take care and thanks for watching.